It's another Manly Monday, and I warn everybody in advance, this Manly Monday might be a bit tough for some people. Uh, I'm going to content warning this off the top. Um, we're going to talk about... I asked on Friday if people would be interested in, you know, a video about men in abusive relationships and some things to keep in mind when leaving. I felt like I had to set up the the dynamics when men are the victims of abuse first. And this was before, you know, obviously before the Steven Crowder thing hit the news. And the reactions to that video. I mean, at first when it was just him and Candace Owens fighting, I was like, oh, tea being spilled. It's like a pigeon shitting on another pigeon. This is awesome. And then the video came out and it was like, Okay, this isn't fun anymore. It's chilling. But the gender dynamics, it's choices of words, it's certain little details, and those don't change when it's a woman doing it to a man. But because we suck as a culture, about understanding how abuse works and how to spot it, these things get really messy and Crowder is trying to, you know, follow the Johnny Depp playbook, not factoring in that Johnny Depp waited a really long time to retaliate after, you know... They were separated, she pulled the thing, they did a joint statement, the things with the dog happened, it settled down for a while, then Aquaman came out, wham, there was this op-ed. He tried to walk away, he tried to let it go. He didn't go after her after the first accusation of abuse. It's when she wouldn't let it go. And it's little details like that that get really, really... Unless you know what to look for, people can get lost in the weeds and end up with darvoing the whole thing. So we're going to dive in. I apologize in advance for any difficult memories or pain points this hits. I know this is hard to talk about and that's... Let me do the help support this channel. I don't want to get too far in and then go, hey, give me money. It just feels wrong. One of the things I found really sickening about the whole way the Crowder thing's been covered is news outlets are monetizing the Ring video doorbell footage. They're not adding to it. They're not doing commentary. They're just putting it on and an ad runs. Before we get to watch a video of a dude smoking a cigar, leaning back, berating his eight months pregnant wife. And the smoking the cigar part was a big tell for me because she's pregnant. Even if he doesn't care about her, he should put the fucking cigar out. That's his unborn kid. That was a big tell for me because people who aren't abusive, they can lose their temper. But they actually care that they're hurting someone. Abusers don't. In the same way. And we'll get to my experiences with why. Based on um, various things. Both personal and, and client stories. Um, not going to name any names. Obviously. But help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session. For someone can use it but can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. It's kind of cool. Clients say to me. You know. They, they feel validated. When they hear a piece of you know, their own perspective, make it anonymously into a video. They're like, oh, cool, that helps someone. Uh, they don't, you know, they don't see it as valuable at the time and it gives them some validation. Now, obviously, if somebody doesn't want to share, I don't do it. And we're getting, because in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing, both sides leaked video to the media. The expectation that 
a victim behave perfectly is a real problem. Because people don't. People don't in general. And abuse is about power and control. And the reason we focus on violence is because that's easy. You shouldn't hit someone. Um, if you do, it's bad. Um, I got into my share of fist fights when I was younger. I've talked about this before. One was with, well, that was the part that ended that relationship because he slept with my best friend on prom night. It was a cliche, but it ended up in a physical altercation. I was a little punk. I talk about that just because I'm not this ivory tower elitist. I have been there. I grew up in a rough neighborhood. Violence was, you know, it was if, if they hit you, hit them back thing. Um, and coming out of that, I'm so grateful that I have other ways to settle things now. I don't feel the need to do it. You know, that's the example of somebody who's not a violent person who has some violent stories. Um, and by the way, I'm not saying I was in the right there. That's a story I used to illustrate how rough the hood was, right? Not because fights were pretty common back then. This was before zero tolerance went into schools. I'm not sure zero tolerance was entirely a good thing. Uh, actually, I don't think it's a good thing, but that that's something for another time. I'm saying this because I'm not looking down. I'm not, you know, coming at this from, oh, shoulds. And I'm talking about what to look for. And in a relationship where both people behave badly, how do you know in these little snippets of video who's acting, who's abusing, and who's reacting to abuse? Because there's this whole thing of mutual abuse. Mutual abuse is not a thing. That is... Like, individual dynamics, you can talk about it in marriage counseling, whatever... When we're talking about abuse defined as an abuse of power to control someone that can't really be mutual. Someone has to have some power that's more than the other person. Otherwise, it's just a bad, unhealthy relationship where people gave as good as they got. And that was the Johnny Depp thing, right? It was a bad, unhealthy relationship. But based on the stuff that was released and we don't know, there were clear markers that there's nothing on video about him saying he hit her. There's her on video talking about hitting him, you know, and you hear the dynamics in the recordings where he is trying to de-escalate things. He is suggesting calming things down and she's taking that as proof. He's not serious. He doesn't care. You see this a lot in abuse dynamics. You see the exact same thing. Roles reversed with Steven Crowder and his wife, who's eight months pregnant. She's trying to de-escalate. She's like, you know, I love you. I need space. You know, I love you. How you're treating me is not cool, but I'm going to walk away. I'm going to let this go. She said things like this. And he's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. Get back here. Stuff like that. That, that, that's pretty telltale. And it's possible some people, like she wasn't talking down to him like, okay, calm down, calm down. That's how an abuser fake de-escalates something. Right. And they, they will do that in public when they know people are watching. Her reactions legitimately seem to be someone who was very upset, but was just trying to get out of the situation because she said we're at, they're at an impasse. It wasn't going to go anywhere. And he was escalating. 
And he claims that was edited. I think what he means is the start point and stop point. He claims make him look uh, inaccurately bad. It's possible based on that. I don't think so. In that case, he was clearly in the wrong. It doesn't matter why the fight kicked off. The way he spoke to her, invoking doing wifely things, and the the judging her. You know, you're not respectful. You're not this. You're not that. Um, whereas she refers to the abuse as a she's she's clearly picked up a skill where you identify the behavior not the person and I mean that clip makes him look really bad because you see the same thing in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard tapes where she is just spoiling for a fight and that was in therapy right and he's trying to de-escalate and she's spoiling for a fight it's the same dynamic that happened between the woman who's still stalking me and her ex-boyfriend he lost it sometimes. No joke. He, he was no saint in that. But people snap when someone is constantly on them. And part of the abuse dynamic is someone being on someone, on someone, on someone until they snap so they can play the victim and say, you're just as bad as I am. But the thing about this particular kind of unrepentant abuser, you know, they're, they pantomime taking responsibility for things, but it's always in the service of another attack. And that makes it very, very, very hard to leave. But before we get to that, I want to talk about the idea of intimate partner violence when the man is a victim. Because destruction of property is a form of violence that doesn't get talked about enough. They use it as, that's what Amber Heard tried to use against Johnny Depp. I mean, the context of that one video is he just found out he lost all his money because he had sleazy management and he smashed around some kitchen cabinets. But then you see him going for the mega pint, right? And you can tell he slows down. He, he's not mad at her. So as he approaches her, her his body language becomes more, I'm not going to hurt you, reaches for the thing. And she, she's recording him the whole time. And you see her in the corner of the video. She does not shy away from him. Compared to some of the other stuff that we see where the body language is extremely different, right? Little things like that are the difference between I lost my shit and you know, I took it out of kitchen cabinets, which he can afford to fix. And destroying someone's personal property as punishment. You know, I have uh, friends who were victims of abuse and their stuff would just kind of disappear. And I know there's that whole song about, you know, before he cheats about a woman wrecking the guy's car. Um, I like the song as sort of rebel outlaw country, but yeah, not something to aspire to. That is destruction of property. Probably shouldn't wreck the guy's car. Right now, but that's just a, he cheated on her, retaliate, whatever. But the destruction of property thing and the way a, an abuser of a man intimates 
threats against the people he cares about are unique dynamics that I've seen that don't tend to be the same. And, and sometimes it can be, right? But, it, you know, look at the Amber Heard thing. They went out of their way to just ruin Paul Bettany because he stood up for Johnny Depp. That was unnecessary. It was unnecessary to call him, you know, a drug buddy. He wasn't on trial. But shaming the friends, attacking the friends keeps the abuser there because they're the abused person there because they're afraid of what's going to happen if they leave you know uh the the woman stalking me released a screen grab wherein she calls me a fucking two-faced see you next tuesday as proof her boyfriend was abusive and i'm looking at that going okay why why am i in this you know why why am i even a thing in this conversation in the same little bit um and i was going to show it but then she started dragging in third parties and i don't want to drag in those third parties anymore so i'll just read the greatest hits she refers to him as my spaniel, as in a dog. She says he, she resents me because she can't control me. Why am I even a fight topic among these two back in 2011, right? She pulls the same stunt Crowder did with you're not taking responsibility. You're not being responsible. You're not, you're refusing. And... She's trying to paint this, and this looks like a setup to me. I don't know the context of, of this. I don't know why I'm involved. At the time, I tried to talk to the guy about it. I got the sense he was too ashamed, and I dropped it because there were bigger problems. But, uh, you know, she claims he choked her. But you're refusing to take any responsibility for choking me. You choked me because you're a fucking irresponsible, impetuous drunk. You're just as bad as I am. Just as bad as I am. That's interesting wording. What has she done that makes that just as bad? Because you usually see that language when someone has finally done one thing in response to the 12 things the truly abusive party has done and they treat that as an equivalent because oh now you're just as bad as i am now i have something i can hold over you instead of it being look we both did things she's calling him impetuous drunk it, you know irresponsible impetuous drunk i i don't know why that responsible 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 thing is such a thing with abusers but we see it in the crowder thing you know we saw it with the amber heard thing to an extent though she picked on his age and there's always because men self-harm via alcohol and abusive partners of both genders treat that as weakness and use it against them and so they drink more because it's self-harming and it numbs the overwhelm and the negative feelings that, you know, men are discouraged from having. And so it's a form of escape because the learned helplessness has kicked in at this point because it's, you know, one thing I noticed in, in Crowder's instance, because I was like, oh, He's finally seeming to be accountable, but he said, you know, it's been the most heartbreaking experiences, experience of his life, calling the end of his marriage, my deepest personal favor, failure. It's no one else's fault, but my own. I picked wrong. So the problem wasn't 
what you did in the relationship is where I thought it was going. It was, no, I just picked the wrong woman. It's her fault. It's all her fault. She's inherently worthless, you know, which, okay, people may say that about their ex, but it's, uh, when, when you talk to victims, they are acutely aware of all the terrible things they did in the relationship because the abuser has reminded them of it over and over and over again. And this is true of men and women. You know, they'll say, well, I did wrong too, I did wrong too. But, you know, there are limits on no matter what someone has done in the Steven Crowder's instance, if your wife is eight months pregnant, even if she comes out and you're outside because you're smoking a cigar, if you get into a protracted fight with her, put out the damn cigar, man. Don't sit there like fucking boss hog from the Dukes of Hazards. Dated reference, I know. And that shame in the victim is why it's so hard to leave. And they say leaving is a process and that's true. But, again, abuse is about power and control. And because there is so much sympathy for women, because of the way we've been trained to react to these things as societies, yes, there is a very real risk of violence um, when people leave a violent partner. That is absolutely true. And that is more common that women are the victims and men are the perpetrators. Even when men are the victims, men are the perpetrators. But there are other things an ex can do to you when they are vindictive. And that's why that it's about power and control. It's all about looking at the power dynamics. If both people are going, you're a piece of shit, you're a fucking whore, you're this, if they're going both ways, okay, equal playing field. But when you're seeing one party dishing it out and the other party capitulating, 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 they're adapting, they're adapting, they're trying to, they're trying to deescalate there and, and, and the person just keeps... That's pretty telltale. And that doesn't stop because a person gets physical space or ends the relationship. A truly vindictive ex will go after every relationship you have, everything you care about, your reputation, you know, your pets your home they know that the sympathy line is direct violence that's illegal so they will do everything short of that as long as they think they have plausible deniability because this is something to remember about this like a truly abusive person not somebody that has a few bad moments you know goes through a bad time and turns it around people who are just they abuse because they're abusive. Nothing is ever their fault. Everyone made them somehow. And that is not true. You can't control your feelings. You can't control your actions. And, you know, the idea that Steven Crowder thinks that he, you know, his wife made him behave that way because she wouldn't handle a medication for the dogs she thought was possibly toxic to pregnant women. That's a valid concern. She could be wrong, but that's a valid concern. You don't handle it that way, right? The same way if someone has a drinking problem, for instance, calling them names over it is not caring. You know, you can lose your shit over it sometimes because, you know, there are knock-on effects of addiction. But 
if someone is truly an addict, that's a mental illness, not a character flaw. They need help not being berated. And people hit the end of their rope, sure. But that's dirty pool. So the things men have to consider when they're leaving an abusive relationship is the collateral damage. Not just in terms of manipulating the system by taking the one bad moment, your worst moment in the whole relationship, and trying to paint the whole thing with that brush the way the stalker is, you know, the way Amber Heard did, the way Steven Crowder is clearly preparing to do here. And more has to come out, right? We've had one video, we'll see. But that video looked pretty bad. But, so they will make that, the, the entirety of you, but they will also go after the people who supported you because the idea is to separate you from your support system. They continue to do that after the relationship ends because to them it's not over. To them it's never over. It's over when they say it's over because they're the one constantly going, get back and fight. We saw that with Amber Heard. We saw that with Steven Crowder. I saw that with this stalker. She does not see how the things she released makes her look worse than him. All she sees in that is him saying, I choked you because. Now, my understanding of what happened there was she'd stolen his phone. She had to think about that. And she was sending nasty messages to women he knew, pretending to be him. And so he sort of pinned her against the wall tried to grab the phone and in the scuffle his arm slipped up and this came from eyewitnesses to the event that she sent me to that's a struggle that's not coercive control that's not one person having power over the other person that's the difference there should you ever lay hands on somebody no but when we talk about whether it's an unhealthy relationship or it's outright abuse, that's the line. Was that a power trip? No, that was somebody being desperate to contain the damage. And what I see in the chat log she released, and again, she named two other people and is making a big deal out of it. And I know at least one of those people is has very real mental health issues. And I do not want to involve them in this because of that. And the stalker knows this too. And I'm pretty sure she's using it. Because she knows people aren't going to hit back because of that. Nobody's going to rip that off because... uh. -uh. Um, but that's the thing in every case where a man was abused, that I was a friend of theirs, the abusive ex went after me. And part of it is because I knew about the abuse. And so I need to be discredited. But when the separation happens, because it's not over for the abuser, it can't be their fault. So it's got to be someone else's fault. And with women, they tend to blame female friends. With men, sometimes they blame the friends. Yeah, but, you know, they do vindictive things. Like I know this one case, this guy keeps signing his ex up for Kijiji, saying they've got an Xbox listed really cheap and so random people are showing up to his building. And... It's, it's technically illegal, but the cops don't do anything about it. So it's just on the edge of that lawful but awful because the cops don't want to put the resources into tracing beyond reasonable doubt that this is the, the person you claim to do it is doing it. The, 
the registration systems are too porous on these social media accounts. So people get away with it. And you do have to be prepared that your reputation is going to get dragged through the mud or worse in a lot of cases, the reputation of the people that have your back is going to get dragged through the mud. And a lot of guys to protect their friends stay in a bad situation. And as somebody who was that friend, please don't. Please tell us what's going on. Let us know what happened. Let us know about the grudge from the vindictive ex and let us make the choice for ourselves. Stop trying to protect us to the point that you're losing yourself. You're being abused because, you know, this is what men do. They fall on their sword for the people around them, right? It's a noble instinct, but nobody who cares about you wants that for you. They want to stand and fight with you. They don't want you suffering alone because of the threats an abusive partner has made. And men and women both documenting is this double-edged sword. And they say document things. Well, here's the thing. As somebody who had to do it, it drains you looking at this abuse again and again and again, reviewing it, going back through it. You know, I've had to go back to stuff from 2011 and I've, I'd forgotten a lot of it. Um, you know, the, the stalkers accusing me of writing this online thing about a crowdfunding scam she did and I didn't write it. That's how I found out about it was this post. I don't know who wrote it. I don't recognize the details in it. And she's accusing me. And she's responding to it as aliases saying, it's me, it's me, it's me. Now, I can't do anything about it. And I don't think it's really that important, you know, but every so often people are like, they're saying this about you. It's like, yes. Well, is it true? And that's where you have to go. You know, I think, do you really have to ask me that? Now, it's different. I had a couple people saying, I'm assuming what she's saying isn't true. Fair, right? But, you know, some people said after the latest round, wow, I feel bad for even reading this now. It's so absurd. But the, the abuser doesn't think it's absurd. You know, they think the absolutely unacceptable stuff they're doing is totally fair because someone made them. And that's the thing you have to keep in mind. The reason they lecture you on responsibility and accountability is they hear it a lot because they're not. And it wounds them. So they use it as a weapon against other people. These, these people aren't terribly smart. They poke around a whole bunch of different pain points until they find one that works and they just keep hitting it. They're shameless and, and they're, you know, they have a lot of energy because the conflict fuels them. It doesn't exhaust them the way it does a normal person. And so what do you do? Well, you have to do what's the hardest thing in the whole thing. You have to tell someone what's going on. And that can be a deeply shameful process. And that's why, you know, I've gone through this. I'm 34 minutes in. And I haven't even addressed that. And so, and I mean, there are some things you can do. I can assure you that your friends probably already have their suspicions. I know I did. There were a couple of things. And, and, you know, it was really tough because, yeah, my friend lied to me. But I understand. You know, I thought it was strange at the time. But I took them at their word. But when they told me later, it's like, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. The whole thing seemed very odd. 
um, because, you know, these were guys I'd talked to and normally they'd tell me if they had an, an accident and, you know, I'd see these injuries on them and they insist they were self-inflicted and they look like defensive wounds, the opposite of what the stalker did, which she claimed her ex, ex attacked her, but it, it wasn't even close to looking anything like a defensive wound. And it went from, he choked me, which was a, a, uh, an exaggerated, but at least there was a grain of truth in that, into he cut me, which no, no, he didn't. Everybody was there at the time, but they don't care. To them, that story becomes true. And anybody who doesn't believe them is part of what they believe to be the abuse. Because that's what they have to tell themselves to keep behaving the way they do. Because if they don't have someone to blame, they realize they can stop. And then accountability actually kicks in. And it's hard to realize you did terrible things. It's hard to recognize that you unintentionally hurt someone. Never mind, you know, recognizing you kind of did it deliberately. You just didn't care if they were hurting because you were mad or hurt or whatever. But in a healthy relationship, somebody should always care that you're hurt. They don't have to accept your behavior. They should care about your feelings. And if somebody's coming down on you for an addiction or a mental health issue, you know, or anything like that, where you're still in the relationship, not, you know, fighting in court and all that, that's just ugly. That's a sign of a problem. That's a sign of a real problem. That's not love. That's control. And that's why people with mental health problems are more likely to be the victims of this stuff than the perpetrators. Perpetrators can have mental illnesses that inform how they abuse. It doesn't explain why they abuse. And that's another very important thing to keep in mind. Because when it starts being this whole thing about, oh, they have this mental health condition. Well, okay. A lot of people have, say, borderline personality disorder and they aren't flagrantly abusive. They get help. They understand their condition. They learn to regulate. It takes more work, but they put in, they put in the work. These are people that don't see right and wrong the way right and wrong actually work. These are people who always have an excuse for what they do. They never go, what I did was wrong. I was angry and hurt and overwhelmed, but that's no excuse. It's, I did it because. And the minute you try to beat them at their own game, because everybody does. Everybody thinks they're strong. I'm weak. I need to be strong. And so you end up emulating their behavior. They hold that against you. And that's the only thing that ends up mattering. And all I can say is, yeah, it's really tough. Staying is tougher. Because the longer you stay, the more ammunition uh, the abuser is going to get against your friends. The more complicit they can make you seem. Uh, the stalker keeps dropping names of family members, you know, who I haven't seen in years because they're not stable either. And because of that, you know, judging reality became, and again, they know I'm not going to go there because of the mental illness. They're using that against me. 
That's frustrating. But I'm not going to let them draw me into something that causes secondary fights. That's what they want. Um, they've flushed out some legitimately bad people telling a very warped version of what went down years ago. I don't care. It was years ago. They're not relevant to my life anymore. No point in rehashing that. I am laser focused on the fact that this stalker is abusive. No matter what the guy did, her behavior is still her behavior. And blaming me because of who I believe based on evidence is just a further permission structure for the abuse. And you can't expect them ever to see reason. You just have to get away from them. But trust me, as long as the, the only reason your friends will go, I can't take this anymore, is if you continue to be in contact with the abusive person. If you're getting away and you're living your life and she or he keeps coming after you, trust me, your ride or dies will be your ride or dies. When you continue to engage, that does force them to make a choice. So, and it's hard, but it's very important that no matter how much your ex provokes you, do not engage as a man because the minute you give back, they'll use that. And so, I, and I've cautioned male friends about the angry texts, you know, the burn the witch texts that they made a whole bunch out of at the Johnny Depp thing. That's so human to talk that way because you're regrowing your proverbial testicles, right? But if it goes to a court battle, they will subpoena your phone records that will be admissible. And so whenever friends do that, I always, because it's on the record, right? It's like, hey, don't say that. You don't mean that. She could use that. So it's right there. It's clear. It's not literal. Because I've seen it used. Not just the Johnny Depp thing didn't surprise me because I saw it beforehand. You know, the, the stalker used it in, in, in my case. And this is now, this started in 2011. It's still going on. She's impersonating a trans woman. That's the reality when it's a female abuser. They can bob along and harass from a distance. But it's still better to be out. At least it's from a distance instead of in uh, r right in front of you. And, and this is an ongoing thing. This is, see, I've ripped it open and I could talk for another two hours on this. Um, please give me your questions and I'll do like individual videos and individual questions maybe because this is something that needs to be discussed and I try I tried to do a bubble for it, but too big a step. Um, managing the anger when this has happened to you is very hard. And you do deserve support with it. Um, allowing you space and time to be angry in a way that they can't weaponize. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to leave it there. Um, th help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patron.com slash Leanna K or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it, but can't afford it. You know, some of these things come up in these sessions, uh, coffee.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching a very, very heavy manly Mondays. Stay well, stay safe.